explain the normal process of digestion, the mini gastric bypass procedure, and how weight loss will occur upon complete food travels from your mouth, down your esophagus, and into your stomach. Currently, your stomach can hold about 40 ounces of food. Once in your stomach, the food combines with digestive juices containing acids and enzymes that help break it down into smaller particles. Once broken down, the small particles are slowly released into the first part of your small intestine, the duodenum. Most of the calories and nutrients from the broken down food are absorbed in the duodenum and the jejunum, which is the second part of the small intestine. Food particles not absorbed by the small intestine leave the body in the form of waste. Surgery begins with the surgeon inserting five trocars into your abdomen. A trocar is a tool that has a hollow sleeve and allows your surgeon to pass a laparoscopic video camera and other endoscopic tools into your abdomen. This allows your surgeon to perform the operation from outside your body. Your surgeon will use an endoscopic stapler to divide your stomach into two parts. The smaller part that connects to the esophagus is reshaped into a long narrow tube and will serve as your new mini stomach it will only hold four to six ounces of food. The larger portion of your old stomach will remain alive and inside your body. It will still produce digestive juices to aid in digestion, but it will no longer come into contact with food. Next, your surgeon will measure the length of your small intestine that will be bypassed. This bypass section will include all of the duodenum and part of the jejunum and is usually between five to seven feet from where the small intestine connects to the larger portion of your old stomach. The length of the bypass is determined by your specific physical condition and lifestyle situations. Your surgeon will then connect the end of your new mini stomach pouch to the bypass point of the small intestine using the endoscopic stapler. This connection point is called an anastomosis. Once this connection is completed, your surgeon will reinforce the outer circumference of the anastomosis with soup. Your new mini stomach will hold much less food, causing you to feel full more quickly. Therefore, you will eat smaller amounts. Secondly, once food leaves your mini stomach, it will bypass your duodenum and part of your jejunum. This means less calories will be absorbed by the body. However, digestive juices from the large portion of the old stomach and enzymes from the gallbladder will still travel through the duodenum and will meet up with the food at the bypass point. These acids and enzymes will aid in digestion as food travels through the remainder of the small intestine. Finally, certain hormones that regulate your appetite will be affected after surgery. Therefore, you will eat less not only because your stomach is physically smaller, but also because this change in hormone levels will suppress your appetite. The gastric bypass has some similarities to two other bariatric procedures, the sleeve gastrectomy and the Roux and Y gastric bypass. There are some important differences. The sleeve gastrectomy is a restrictive only procedure that, like the mini gastric bypass, creates a stomach pouch along the lesser curve. Unlike the mini gastric bypass, however, the sleeve gastrectomy completely removes and discards the larger bypassed portion of the old stomach, making the sleeve gastrectomy completely irreversible. While the mini gastric bypass and the Roux and Y procedure both create a small stomach and bypass a portion of the small intestine, the mini gastric bypass has only one anastomosis instead of two. Additionally, in the mini gastric bypass, the stomach pouch is created along the lesser curvature of the stomach, as opposed to the top greater curvature in the Roux and Y procedure, making it less likely to stretch out over time. Finally, these two features, the single anastomosis and the long stomach pouch along the lesser curve, make the mini gastric bypass easily reversible or revisable should the need ever occur.